each one to this special event at Remark, the institute that is dedicated to following Christ's mission of healing and hurting the world. Also, I would like to uh, welcome each one that is joining us via internet around the world. I understand there's people joining us from Asia and multiple countries um, throughout the world and some uh, in the United States as well. And we welcome you to this um, special event. Let's bow our heads and ask the Lord's blessing. Father in heaven, we thank you. To our dearest seniors, the song we are about to sing is dedicated to you. Your presence will be so missed here at the Academy. The inspiration and leadership you have given us. Offer us no, no dimmer next year and next year we can be sure that we'll be just as good as this year, if not better. Thanking you again for your leadership. So we pray that wherever you go and whatever you will be doing, you will remember the models that we had here and the models that you chose to remain faithful in seeking knowledge of Christ. And that you will always listen to that voice of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jesus calling, who will go and who 
introduction for what's up next. Um, anyway, I'll just jump in. It seems like last year, I started here in a class of 12, thinking that the seniors were unattainably old, and I would be forever a freshman. I guess that moves faster in hindsight than it does when you look to the future. In the four years that I've been here, people have come and gone. Some have kept in touch, others haven't. But, it is, but the one thing that stands out to me the most isn't the fun or the bad times, but rather the people I've known and the moments which I've seen Christ in others. My freshman year, I can remember so many times that I found myself in trouble, yet always knowing that there was someone who I could talk to and make sound advice from, aside from God. <laughs> I remember being extremely homesick one day, and a certain senior at the time, Emery Dent, where is that guy right now? Oh, over there. Emery, you have made a great difference in my life, helping me to feel at home in a place that wasn't. <laughs> I remember the first time that, as the common adage goes, the world didn't revolve around me. I saw that uh, everyone else has their own struggles, and I learned to be able to help them from you as well. Emery, God has used you to show me that it's possible to emulate Christ, even today. Another of those uh, distinct freshman memories was on our mission trip to Belize. I was oblivious to the rigors of an eight-hour workday, so when given a job that I would often do it halfway and then return to watch other things get done. I mean, there's just something fascinating about progress that you just really want to watch stuff happen when you aren't doing that. <laughs> so I remember at one point when I had come back to see more uh, work done by very diligent people. Um, Mr. Chad pulled me aside and asked me what in the world was I doing? I wasn't willing to work. Why? Like, what's my problem? Do I want to be here? What's going on? And he used one phrase that's stuck with me ever since. Make it happen. That, those three words have really helped me from schoolwork to other just chores, all kinds of stuff that has to happen. You don't want to make happen, but it needs to happen nonetheless. Ms. Chad, thank you so much for teaching me this. More recently, this year I've had the pleasure of working on plant services. As it is quite strenuous work, it takes a fair amount of stamina and mental fortitude to buckle down and make things happen. My work supervisor, Mr. Crump, he pushed me to do better constantly instead of letting me slack off when he knew I was getting tired. Even though it was hard, and it was definitely the most demanding job that I've ever held, it has also been the most rewarding. I learned so much this year from being pushed to work harder, to work, to being on the moment I arrived, to the moment I was done. These two years, I've had the privilege of being an RA in the guys' dorm. I've learned so much from Mr. Nick. Where's Mr. Nick? I know he's over here. There you are. I've learned so much from you, just from things like thinking through, from empathizing with others, not just saying this is the law, so get over it and deal with it. I learned a lot from you from that. One of our positions in this world is simply to be a link in a chain. God on one side, our friends on the other. The more people we have pointed us to God, the greater our impact on the world around us. The more people we can influence for Christ, the more people we can get to spend eternity with. Our lives are to be continually pulling others to Christ as we ourselves strive to run to him also. Mr. Nick, you taught me a lot about standing there, pulling others closer to Christ. When I started here, a relationship with God was a nebulous concept that sounded absolutely amazing. Four years later, I can say without a doubt that it is. There are so many things that I can point to you to show this. Bible class, spring campouts, mission trips, choir trips, um, devotions, common interest in spiritual matters among the teachers and, te and teachers. All these things let me closer to God and help me find a rock, the rock, to stand on in a turbulent world. I'm quite certain that without the environment here at Weimar, I would be just another teen chasing the cares of the world and disregarding the importance of eternal life. I thank all the staff for letting me, for letting God shine through you to all the students here. Without you, Weimar Academy would not be what it is today. 
work of God in my life, I wouldn't be here today. Back before I came here, I was living for the things in the world. I lived to be popular, to be the sports star, just to live a good life. This good life is a fleeting dream, something that always seems to be on the verge of attainment every time it slips away. When I was asked to give up this dream, I wasn't interested simply because it was all that I had ever known. It took time, but eventually I listened and wound up here. God has been leading through all my life, from then until now, and I know he will continue to lead me in the future. From here, I plan to go to a mission school in Belize, where I will be learning skills that are of use in the mission field, from there, college and a degree. Life is full of twists and turns. You won't know where you will end up until you are there. Our plans are rarely God's plans. In Isaiah 55, 8 and 9, it states, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are my ways your ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my thoughts higher than your ways, and my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. Praise the Lord. Just praise the Lord. It is comforting to know that he will be and has been leading me. His plans for my life are greater than my own aspirations. If I will let him lead my life, I can be secure in the trust that he will lead me home. So, even though it is likely that we won't see each other again, we have a hope, a hope in the coming of the Lord. If we will remain faithful to Christ, then we will meet each other again on the heavenly shore. One day, I hope to see each one of you again in heaven, then we can catch up on what God has done in each of our lives. for bringing me this far. My life before coming to Weimar Academy my junior year, I was lost. Lost in a world of darkness. Although I was searching, I wasn't really seeking because I didn't know what exactly I was searching for. After wanting to commit suicide and ending up in a very depressed state, my family and my parents decided to move to Weimar from Loma Linda. I'm extremely thankful for the sacrificial move although I wasn't too happy about it at the moment. <laughs> Backtracking from the sacrificial move, I remember about five to six years ago, I visited Neymar for the very first time. I still re remember eating at the cafeteria and thinking that the yellowish orangish stuff on the potato was cheese. Oh boy, I was in for a surprise. It was actually um, cashews and red bell peppers. As the cafeteria serves vegan fare. So, <laughs> Then, at my parents' promptings, I came and visited Weimar again, this time during my sophomore year of high school, during my birthday weekend. I was very upset at my parents for deciding to come on the weekend of my birthday, and I remember feeling very out of place due to my inappropriate attire and rotten attitude. That weekend, I was interviewed with Mrs. Gallant and Miss Lorraine. Truth be told, I wasn't very honest when answering the questions they asked. <laughs> I just didn't want to move to the middle of nowhere, which my parents strongly hinted at if I wasn't accepted. <laughs> Thankfully, only through the miracle of making the extra classrooms was I and two other students able to join the junior class because we were on the waiting list. When I enrolled my junior year, I was in for a great awakening. I wasn't really accustomed to eating the cafeteria's cheesy, cheesy polenta which, by the way, I love. <laughs> or walking across campus for meals, wearing long skirts, or singing hymns for every single worship. <laughs> for a while, I hated Weimar Academy because it rebuked my rebelliousness inside. But as I felt God's love engulfing me, as I experienced every class, every hymn, every prayer, every teacher, every student, every mission trip, every pathway to health, every singing event, I couldn't keep pushing God away anymore. I couldn't help but surrender to his love, and it was then and only then that I started to change. I soon learned the importance of keeping my eyes focused on Christ, and I began to know him. And if that's all you learn here at Weimar Academy, it was worth it. To know Christ is the most important thing you need in reality. Christ is all you need. Don't ever think that you need anything out there to fulfill you. Trust me, I've tried it. It doesn't work. It's fun for a moment, but is that really what you want? Or do you want to be fulfilled for eternity? Yes, I learned a lot more. I learned about the structure of molecules 
how to convert from grams to moles, how a circuit works, refractions, and so much more with Miss Lorraine's science classes. I learned how to make soap at life skills with Shayla and how to arrange flowers with Mrs. Keon. From Miss Rena, I learned how to make keep up, how to use ab workouts <laughs> and squats to improve my singing, and ultimately how to witness to people who don't know about Jesus through inspiring music. In Miss Tara's English class, I learned what Aegis, Amalgam, and Tara Sakuro mean. Um, I can't pronounce it that well. <laughs> Thank you for letting us listen to the pineapple stories, which taught me to not be selfish and to completely rely on God. Thank you, Mr. Mike. Wherever you are. Oh, hi. Okay. <laughs> when, um, for keeping us updated all the time and for always having a positive, positive attitude when I come into the office to get copies or to use your stapler on your desk. Thank you, Mr. Nick for being gracious to all your students and for teaching us about finance and government. For always talking to me about my day and wanting to know what I'm truly feeling and not just how are you. Good type of thing. Thank you, Mr. Peacock. Oh, Mr. Peacock. <laughs> Thank you for teaching me the double angle formulas and for teaching me how to find the roots of complex numbers in polar form. Whatever uh, that's really hard. I just don't really know. I'll never forget. <laughs> I'll never forget your inspiring worships that ultimately reminded me of Jesus' wonderful character. Thank you, Mrs. Gallant, for putting up with my craziness in the dorm and enduring my little pranks. Thank you for reminding us to drink lots of water and for reminding me that I have to be on time to things. Thank you for encouraging me to be a godly young woman and for letting me cry on your shoulders more times than I can ever count. I will never forget our wonderful talks in the office about many different topics. Thank you for re rebuking me in love, of course, and explaining to me the principles behind the rules here at Mimar, and for just explaining things that I had questions about. I love you so much, and thank you for impacting my life in such a miraculous way. Thank you, Mr. Chad, for being so patient with me. But most of all, thank you for teaching me about prophecy and a plethora of other things that I had never heard about until I came to Weimar and sat in your Bible and history classes. Thank you for being my father and family groups. And Miss Melinda, thank you for believing in me and telling me that I could write a book on purity. I have to say this. Thank you so much for your wonderful food. It's amazing. Um, you both are so inspiring, encouraging, and invigorating. I love you both very much. Thank you, Miss Melody, for helping me to make to-do lists and for emotional support. I will miss your beautiful smile. I'll never forget the late night talks on your bed with Miss Melissa. <laughs> you know exactly what those were about. <laughs> Miss Abby and Miss Katie, thank you for having mercy on me, especially during that one weekend when it was only you two on duty and I went a little bit overboard. I truly love you both, and you know I was just going through a little transitional phase last year. Well, actually a big transitional phase. Thank you, Miss Katie, for being my big sister and for showing me that it's possible to change with Christ. I love you. Thank you, Miss Abby, for those late night talks this year with Rachel and me. Thank you for inspiring me to become a virtuous woman and to stay in the castle. I love you. Freshmen, soon to be sophomores, you are a great bundle of energy. I see so much potential in you. I see, um, keep striving to be like Christ. Sophomores, soon to be juniors, I see Christ working through you in miraculous ways. Use all of your talents for him and keep striving to be like Christ. Juniors, soon to be seniors, you have the faithful responsibility of showing Christ's love to everyone in your school because we all look up to you. Keep coming to know God and keep striving to be like Christ. Most of all, thank you senior girls for having crazy times together and talking about, well, stuff. <laughs> Let's keep striving to be like Christ and become powerful godly women of service for him. Thank you senior boys for being so virtuous. Just kidding. You still have a long way to go. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I'm actually not.
not joking. Thank you for being chivalrous, guarding yourselves, and striving to be like Christ. <laughs> Thank you, class of 2016, for being an inspiring class to everyone around you, even those of us who joined last year throughout high school at Weimar Academy. You have displayed a character of service and of love to everyone. I love you all. Friends, family, staff, special guests, and graduates of 2016, Thank you for being here today to witness a transition in our lives. I never would have guessed that I would be standing here before you about to get my diploma. Like I said before, I had no direction in my life. Short skirts, tight pants, and a sassy attitude would have accurately described the condition I was in before coming to Weimar Academy. Even though it's not just about the outward appearance, it's truly about the heart. Sports and boys were my life. I could care less about religion, and every Saturday seemed to drag by. I was depressed and plagued by distorted thoughts, which I know, now know how to correct them using Dr. Nedley's methods and the DR program. <laughs> I tried filling my life with things that weren't good for me, leaving me with a hole in my heart. But by God's grace, I stand before you today as a new person, made whole by his unconditional love. And this is what truly matters. I now believe in God's power because I've seen him work in my life. I now believe that Christ can take broken hearts like mine and transform them into something beautiful. I now realize that the best place in the world to be is at the feet of Jesus. Prayer. I now understand that nothing in this entire world is of value but Jesus Christ. And Weimar Academy has helped me to know Jesus and strive to be like him. I will really miss the Academy and I love you all so much. But those who profess to believe in Jesus should ever press to the light. They should daily pray for the light of the Holy Spirit to shine upon the pages of the sacred book, that they may be enabled to comprehend the things of the Spirit of God. We must have implicit trust in God's word, or we are lost. The words of men, however great they may be, are not able to make us perfect, to thoroughly furnish unto all good works. 2 Thessalonians 2.13 says, God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth. In this text, the two agencies in the salvation of man are revealed. The divine influence and the strong, the living faith of those who follow Christ. It is through the sanctification of the spirit and the belief of the truth that we become laborers together with God. God waits for the cooperation of his church. He does not design to add a new element of efficiency to his word. He has done great work in giving his inspiration to the world. The blood of Jesus, the Holy Spirit, the divine word are ours. The object of all this provision of heaven is before us, the souls for whom Christ died, and it depends upon us to lay hold of the promises God has given and become laborers together with him, for divine and human agencies must cooperate in this work. My prayer is that we all lay hold of the promises of God that he has given us, depend solely on him, and finish the work that he has called each and every one of us to do. May we be lights to reach those in darkness. So, I know that one of the major roles of public speaking is that you have to make eye contact, but I'm afraid that if I make too much eye contact, then I'll start crying. So please don't um, be offended if I don't make a lot of eye contact. But anyways, it was a Friday night, and 14-year-old Rachel was sitting in a pew at her church when suddenly, around 50 high school students clad in angel outfit choir uniforms descended from the balcony onto the stage singing with the most angelic voices she had ever heard. This group of students was none other than Weimar Academy. Before that point, all I knew, or all I thought I knew, about Weimar Academy was that it was an ultra-conservative, nun school with intense rules, crazy dress code, and a no-dating policy. Basically, the scariest place you could imagine. But as I watched the students' faces, listened to their songs, and even contemplated their song introductions, my prejudiced thoughts were broken down, and I realized that on the contrary, these students possessed something that I did not have. My Christian walk consisted of nothing more than occasional devotions and hasty prayers. I knew that God was real, and I knew about Him, but I didn't have an experience with Him. 
These kids, on the other hand, exuded this fire, this love for God, and all I could do was soak up the warmth from the flames. In that moment, God planted a seed in my heart, and I remember turning to my mom and whispering in her ear, I want to go to Weimar Academy and look like an angel too. <laughs> Little did I know that God had the same plans for me. That summer, I attended Teen Bible Academy and I came to realize my deep need of something more. God kept putting these wee Martians in my path. And through a series of miraculous events, I found myself at Weimar Academy on registration day. I remember driving through those Weimar Institute gates that warm August morning four years ago, not really knowing what to expect, but hoping against hope that I would find that something more here, that I would find purpose and meaning to my life. Fast forward four years, and here I am standing before you today, a graduating senior of the class of 2016. How can I sum up these past four, or should I say three and a half years? I could talk about all of the rousing song services that always made me want to close my eyes and sing at the top of my lungs, or the choir tours where I saw people brought to tears in front of my very eyes. I could talk about Mr. Peacock's worships before math class that would convince me that God must have whispered in Mr. Peacock's ear that morning exactly what I needed to hear, or the Bible classes where I finally came to understand things like the investigative judgment that before I had not understood and had only feared. I could talk about the big things like mission trips where I saw lives changed, or the small things like mealtime conversations where my strength was where that strengthened my faith in God. But I believe that all of these things can be summed up into one statement. Something that you wouldn't exactly expect a senior at Weimar Academy to be saying during her senior speech on commencement day, but something I know the leadership of Weimar Academy would love to hear, and that is this. I fell in love. Everywhere I went, everything I did, I kept encountering God, and I kept falling in love. And as I fell in love, He changed my life. Amen. He gave me something more that I desired, and even more than that. These four years have not been perfect, but through all of the trials, victories, and everything in between, I have learned to make God my everything. My first, my last, and my best. And now, standing before you today, I desire to be found faithful. And I tend to worry about things, like Mr. Chad said, you, Mr. Chad, you can't cry. <laughs> Something that Mr. Chad said the other day has really stuck with me 
and I pray that it sticks with you. And he said this, I hope that no one ever tells you. <laughs> I hope that no one ever tells you. <laughs> I hope that no one ever tells you that God can use you someday. Because God can use me today. Amen. Amen.
and uh, they provided me with constant attention, support. Um, we had a great every Saturday night we get together. Christmas, it was good. Life was life was pretty good. When I was about seven years old, my parents decided to move to the United States. I don't remember exactly how I felt, but I know that I would I could expect a good life. You know, um, a lot of Brazilian people we. Like, when you see um, advertisements of the United States, it's just always, like, the best life, the American dream, and that's what I was expecting. So were my parents. But it did not turn out the way we thought it would. You see, we went to Wildwood, Georgia. And although it is a wonderful place, it is not the place to get a luxurious home and a new, brand new car. I guess we felt... I guess we felt elated and shocked at the same time. But my parents thought, if this is where God wants us to be, then I guess we'll stay. We thought we'd stay about three years and go back because that was the time on our passport and visa. So, you know, might as well live here for three years. It's been, you know, what can you be missing out? I don't remember exactly when I went to school, but I'm sure it was either the first week or the second week. Um, I wasn't too fond of it. I was different and people called me an alien, which in Portuguese, an alien is somebody from another planet. And I had no concept. They called me an alien, I was weird. I couldn't speak English, except for maybe a hello or a goodbye. You know? As time went on, I learned the language. I would always have to carry my dictionary with me. I had an electronic and a book, and I'd always read that. And I would um, venture into new into new realms by trying to say these words even though I, I had no idea what they actually meant. I just hoped that they would understand me. <laughs> and, um, but I eventually learned it. I eventually learned the language. And um, I got pretty good at it. And I developed friendships with people all over the campus. There were people that went to school. There were people who didn't go to school. Um, we would always hang out and have a little bit of fun. It took me some time to get to know them, but once I did, we were good friends. God blessed, and year after year, not only did my life improve, but my family's as well. Um, we arrived there with almost nothing. We had sold everything from Brazil. God bless. We were able to um, get not a super small house. We were able to get furniture, a car, you know, things that normally you wouldn't be able to get in Brazil because it's so expensive we were able to get here. And um, by this time, we had lived there about four and a half years to five years. So over the three years, we decided to stay. And things changed once again. I don't quite remember exactly what day, but I remember when my parents announced that we were going to move to a place called Weimar. I had never heard of it before, and I couldn't even look it up because I didn't know how to spell it. <laughs> so I asked around, you know, I would look it up on Google and I asked around some people. Um, Joanna Hightower, she used to live where I was, and you know, I just asked her, what, like, how do you spell it so I can look it up? And she told me, and I would just go to the internet and go to Google Maps and type in Weimar Institute and then take the little yellow man and just kind of put it down in the street so I could look around me and see what it was kind of like. Because I had no idea about it. But despite my attempts of acquainting myself with this place, I did not want to go. I just didn't. I, all my friends were at Wildwood. I had nothing to do here. I had no one to do here. Not, no one to, to be my friend here. I had, I had never been um, to the West Coast and I just didn't want to go. <clears throat> And um, I made sure everybody knew, everybody knew that I did not want to come. Um, there was no way I was going to give up my friends, my bigger room than I have here, and my then known life to move again. But I had no choice. So we packed everything and soon my family loaded up the last bags into the car and we began our trek across the country. Upon arriving at Weimar, I felt alone. Not not necessarily in a depressing way, but more in a surprised way that there was almost no one on campus. <laughs> I saw very few people around, maybe one person, I remember seeing somebody by the cafeteria and then like another person inside the admin building, but like no one else. And the few that I did see were complete strangers and something that many of you know, I do not like strangers. <laughs> so I didn't like that. But there was no time. <laughs> There was no time to think about that because I arrived on Thursday night and I had to unload everything and get everything ready because school started the next Monday. Um, 
freshman year started out with orientation, and I remember orientation sitting down and just listening to Mr. Chad talk about everything we did, and I don't think I understood it all, but I figured I would learn, and um, I needed orientation at that moment. I was lost. I had no idea. I remember walking up to the to the to the road and I saw the girls dorm and I was like, oh, that must be somebody's house. That's a pretty big house. And, then, and I never found the academy because I never took the time to walk all the way here. <laughs> the first day of school, I could only watch as old friends got together and celebrated while their parents talked to each other and talked about how their summer was. But then one senior, Emery Dent. Emery, where are you? Amen. Yes. Wow. Emery. You came to me and um, you said, hey, how are you doing? And I said, eh, kind of shy. And um, you showed me around the place. You showed me where the bathrooms were, about the Weimar Academy sign, the water flowed down, and you showed me where the classrooms were, kind of um, introduced yourself and to other people to me. And um, it really made me not feel so alone. It was a wonderful feeling to know that at least someone cared enough to find me, a disoriented freshman. Although many good things happened over my first year, there were also many negative things that happened. My mom developed a high allergic reaction from the environment. I don't know exactly what it is to this day. We don't know exactly what it was. About every fall and spring. And it wasn't just the occasional cough. It wasn't just the occasional um, headache. It was a serious, um, debilitating condition. And it raged on for months. I wasn't doing too well either, you know, I don't like, I didn't, I was super shy back then, so I didn't have many friends, just mostly some village kids um, that would walk to school and back and the people on the farm. Um, I was ready. I was ready to leave after the year ended, and we were going to, because um, things were just too hard here, and, you know, there was no way we could just live a normal life with, with the kind of living conditions we had in my mom and my dad and, and And, um, but something happened, we watched the college graduation, I don't remember exactly which year it was, I think it was the end of my freshman year, college graduation. As the college um, graduates were telling the testimony, my parents felt convinced that we should stay. <coughs> but they didn't tell me, they didn't tell anybody. They just, <laughs> just felt convinced that we should stay. Um, and slowly but surely, you know, they thought about it and then we decided to stay. And um, believe it or not, after that decision was made, my mom's allergies were gone, thanks to a program that she went through. Um, I, I, met, um, I met people like Erwin and other staff members that really, that really kind of made me feel at home. And I actually had glimpses of hope for the future. God, I knew God wouldn't let us down and he had some big plans over the next three years. During my sophomore year, I became friends with Omar, and even though he's not here, I just want to mention him. Um, he was a senior, no, he was a junior, no, he was a senior when I was, when I was a sophomore. He was not satisfied to leave me where I was. He was one of the most social guys I ever met, talking to everyone he saw, even if he knew them or not, and he couldn't bear me to see me living a life in which not talking to people was acceptable. Over the course of that year, he taught me and he drilled into me the action of introducing yourself to a new person, which I'm still not very good at, <laughs> developing friendships and keeping them alive. He also, played a, he also played a huge spiritual role in my life. He'd give me random Bible studies, a tent and a campground, and just the randomest places. And, um, and he broke down things so simply that you, you just couldn't. You couldn't just not understand. You couldn't, you, it couldn't be confused. Um, junior year brought a whole new dynamic to my class. That's where a lot of people joined, and I had to learn to expand the horizons and accept new challenges and proofs and things that I knew I should have. I grew in mind, body, and soul, mm -hmm. and experiences that I had cannot be bought or sold for any amount of money. Mm -hmm. Then senior year arrived. Mm -hmm. I knew I'd be fully loaded with responsibilities such as hard classes, planning for events, and just the weight of being a senior and having, you know, having that responsibility. But I don't regret any of it. Mm -hmm. I firmly believe that God worked behind the scenes 
and beyond my imagination to ensure that I had what I needed. Maybe not always what I wanted, but definitely what I needed. He gave me immense support and love through the people around me. Most of them are in his tent. To Miss Rena. Where's Miss Rena? Hey, Miss Rena. I want to thank you for seeing the potential in me and seeking that out and often giving me challenges because you knew I could do it. I remember one of my first songs that I played during the morning and it was at that public school and I was shaking so bad that I could barely keep my feet in the pedal and my fingers would slip off the keys and I messed up a few times. But even though there have been many times where I totally messed up in front of concerts and I didn't start on time, you always gave me more songs, more opportunities. And you helped me, um, you helped me just fight through this, this fear I had called stage fright. But it didn't end there. You have been an example of determination and humility. I thank you for that. To Mr. Chad. I want to thank you for being the best principal I've ever seen. <laughs> I usually laugh when I kind of say it's, it's great. And for being a leader that know how to, knows how to connect with people. I remember our first meeting right outside DC with the gravel parking lot and we had our interview and um, he took me a ride on your golf cart to the hill and showed me these are blackberry bushes, these are, and it just showed me everywhere and this is that and, and he took me to Vespers. And um, throughout the years I've learned one thing, if Mr. Chad is going to do a ship talk it's going to be good. And it's not because of you, but it's because of the God you're connected to. Thank you for showing me what a true leader is. To Miss Lorraine. Thank you for being one of the most informative people I have looked up for years. And I know I told you this, but I just, um, I was thinking about it, and Christian's thinking about it. And Miss Lorraine is, for me, the closest thing you can get to a doctor without actually being a doctor. She just knows everything about everything. Thank you for showing me that it's totally okay to keep on learning, even though you've had degrees and you're a teacher. Um, and thank you for, for teaching me that one can be a teacher, a leader, a graduation planner, group advisor, and a friend. Mm -hmm. To my class. It has been four years since I've seen some of you. Three years, two years, one year since I've seen. But... Regardless of the time I've, I've been with you guys, you guys have been an amazing blessing to me. You know, thank you for supporting me. <laughs> Even though I might have been that annoying freshman or no, no adult sophomore, I think I got it all together junior. <laughs> or still an annoying senior. But thank you so much. I want to challenge you to stay faithful for the rest of the summer, for the rest of the next school year, for the rest of your lives. Mm. To the juniors, sophomores, and freshmen. Weimar Academy really couldn't function if it weren't for you. Amen. I know I can speak this on behalf of my class, and I know that each and every one has impacted some of us and me in very special ways. Although I might not have talked to all of you and I might not have known you very well, I thank you for your influence and your smiles and your, your playfulness and sometimes your seriousness. That it really brought it really brought a depth of meaning to the academy. I also want to challenge you to stay faithful wherever you go, you go here next year. If you have three years left or two years left or one year left. To WASA. This is the Weimar Academy Student Association. I want to thank Mark, Tiffany, Bailey, Rachel, and Christian for being tremendous people to work with, plan with. And although I might not have showed up to all our meetings, and although I might have not known everything, I want to thank you for filling me in. And I'm really going to miss working, working with you guys and just, just having fun. To the senior officers, Rachel, you've been a wonderful vice president, carrying out every order and making sure I did my part. Your frantic cries of utter despair every time one of us would procrastinate always be in my mind. <laughs> Christian, you're
Your true friendship and total unselfishness has impacted me in tremendous ways. I will forever think of you as my classmate, friend, and this pin will remind me that you're my classmate. <laughs> Cafeteria crew and work supervisors, I want to thank you for um, for providing me with a job for over two years and treating me like a true worker. Um, I want to thank Miss Cindy, especially and Miss Dorley and, and Tonga and Miss Kate. Although she's not here, she she was one of my earliest supervisors. Um, I can confidently say now that I could probably run the cafeteria maybe for about two days. <laughs> And you have taught me to do well in the little things, as well as the big things. To Erwin. Is Erwin here today? Yeah. Erwin. I want to thank you for helping me to learn how to increase my love for music. Thank you for showing me that being a musician isn't about being skilled. It isn't about doing fancy things, even though you can't do that too. But it's about being a leader and leading people to the source of all good music. God. Amen. I want to thank you not only for your influence in music, but for your compassion and people um, skills. And um, as you have said before, love people and they will love your message. So I want to thank you for that. Mm -hmm. I also want to thank God for bringing me all the way from Brazil to give me an extraordinary life here in the United States. It really has been. And he can do the same for each one of you here. All you have to do is give your life to him. And although it might seem that God's bringing you somewhere where you might not know the language, you might not know the customs, you might not know what to do, if you trust in him, he'll he'll not only make you he'll not only make you comfortable, he'll make you good at it, and he'll help you to to thrive in whatever circumstance he places you in. Sure, it might be hard sometimes. Life wasn't always easy. It'll always be worth it. Stay faithful.
So along with the senior's uh, presidential speech comes the assumption that the last speech has to have the most impact, it has to be the best. But I think for those of us who have been here all weekend, we can attest to the fact that God has spoken for each one of the graduates this weekend. And I know that a lot of the, the things that they said, even just this morning, I couldn't have put better myself. Weimar Academy and graduating seniors, for the last, for, for the past month at least, you have been stuffed with last words and final charges. And so I'm wondering, what can I say that will be any different? And I've come to the conclusion that maybe there is nothing more to say. The speech that I had prepared um, earlier, Miss Abby basically gave last week during worship. <laughs> so I changed some things up. Um, I called an audible, but then yesterday, Mr. Chad shared many of the points that I was going to share as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now I have come to the conclusion again that there is just no escaping it. I'm not going to try to avoid repeating something that you've already heard, if it's the right thing to say. There is only one that is good, and that is God, and so it makes sense that many of our speeches will be overlapping. So before I start, would you pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, you have brought us to this point in our lives, and I just praise you for the opportunities that you have given each one of us. And our speeches and our lives, I pray, would testify to the fact that you have worked in them. And Father, um, may the words that I speak come directly from your throne. And if it is repeating what anyone else has said, Lord, just bring it back to mind so that it can be ingrained in the minds of these graduates and, and the people listening here today. We praise you for your grace and for your mercy, which has worked so hard in each one of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. 19, 2012, when... 14 rambunctious youngsters, eagerly awaiting their high school experience, stepped onto the dusty Weimar Academy campus. And now, May 29, 2016, 23 ambitious young men and women, many of whom are actually scared out of their minds for the future, graduate on this somewhat less dusty academy field. The many aesthetic changes to the academy, though, reflect only a small portion of the growth that we've experienced individually and as a class. To Vinny, Rachel, Chris, Duncan, Melissa, Vanessa, and Reagan, do you remember us as freshmen? We can respond. Do you remember? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be doing this throughout, so. Many of us, having been forced or at least pushed to come here, try to make the best of it. We were constantly seeking the thrill of something new and exciting, such as planning a, a class trip, which had never been done by the freshman class before that, and we took great pride in that. <laughs> Staring all googly-eyed at the senior class that year, all we wanted to do was be like them. The way they sang, the way they talked, the way they ate, the way they walked. <laughs> all these things were under the closest examination. But I think that all these characteristics of our class that I have mentioned spurned from a genuine desire to do the right thing. And that's what I appreciated about our class freshman year. Then sophomore year, Leilani, Juhei, and Chloe joined the mix. The three of you from completely different walks of life, Leilani from Indiana Academy, Chloe from homeschool, is that right? and Junhei from a completely different country. Our class needed some diversity, not just ethnically, but socially. We needed some spice and flavor. <laughs> and oh my, I three have brought all that and more. From the googly-eyed, impressionable freshmen to sophisticated know-it-all sophomores, we hadn't come too far as a class at that point. But the leadership and talent that you three brought prepared us for a big future. And then junior year, Logan, Matthew, Joanna, Rebecca, Caleb, and Camille. The fact that, isn't it five out of the six of you were homeschooled before coming here, is that right? Other than Rebecca? Okay. The fact that five out of the six of you were, were homeschooled 
gives evidence to the claim that homeschooling moms don't let their kids go until at least their junior year. <laughs> but praise the Lord for the, that they did. Thanks to you six and others, our class pretty much doubled in size from what it was freshman year, and having a big class was something to be proud of. You six have many musical talents, including the cello, flute, violin, voice, and piano. So we were finally able to sing all four choir parts as a class, and even have a little orchestra accompaniment. Yet even these things were not your greatest additions to our class, but it was the desire that each of you had to change, as you've expressed this morning. By our junior year, I started... Sorry, by our junior year, I think that the sophomore know-it-all mindset it had, it had ceased mm -hmm. for the most part and we started to realize that we needed to make some changes before we led the school our next year. Mm -hmm. How were we going to do it? Well, God sent in some special forces by the names of Taylor, Isabella, Marina, Annalise, Tessa, and Nadia. I watched as the six of you ladies joined with determined effort to integrate, or should I say, coalesce yourselves <laughs> into our class despite the differing class schedules that senior year brings. For some reason, among you six, I find the most responsible and self-motivated people in our entire class. Mm -hmm. I guess that's what it takes to come to a new school your senior year. But again, praise the Lord that you did. You wouldn't just sit on the bench as the rest of us ran the last leg of our journey. You each made a choice to take ownership of your school and to leave a legacy that will last well beyond the amount of time that you've spent here. And even though this speech was, for the most part, completed this morning, preparation for it began four years ago, because it was the beginning of my experience. This past week, I spent my last night in the dorm. And I want to read for you a, a little bit from uh, a journal entry that I wrote. And I know what my family is thinking right now. They're thinking, he keeps a journal? <laughs> I don't, but this was the, the first time that I did of my own will. It was last week. And, uh, it was not just for this speech either, okay? It was, it was really flowing. <laughs> but here it is. This is from last week. Before going to bed, I went to pray in my very first dorm room, freshman year. As I stepped in and shut the door, it, it felt like a wave of memories and emotions rushed over me. This was it, I thought. This is where the four-year journey began. In that bed with my roommate sitting across the room, Ju Young from Korea. Yes, Ju Ju. As a freshman, I didn't understand why he would stay up late sometimes to study, read his Bible, and pray. Especially the studying part, I just didn't get it. But I understand now. And even the praying part, I started doing that, and I'm not sure why, to be honest, but I think it just felt like the right thing to do. But now I understand. My eyes literally started to fill with tears as I knelt down in that room by my first bed for the last time. But then I realized something. I don't own this room. This isn't even my bed. Even my real home, where I live with my family, nothing here or there will ever be mine to claim. So for those of you who missed it yesterday from Mr. Chad, I'm gonna say it again. This world is not our home. So don't take ownership of anything here. Not even, not even the bed. <laughs> Seniors, some of us cry for the memories of this place and the time spent with our families. How much more does the father weep with sadness over his lost children who he misses so much? Why do we not long for the future when we will be with our real father in our real home? Let us not forget that this burning desire that your father has for you is unmatched by even the closest earthly ties or tightest family bonds. God's love for you is just as real as the person sitting next to you and the stage that I'm standing on. Your father longs to have you home again. Speaking of close friends and family bonds, the father-child relationship is not the only comparison that God uses to illustrate his relationship with us. Many times throughout his love letter, the Bible, God refers to the church as his bride. 
With that in mind, I want to ask you some questions, seniors. This is where you respond. Have you ever seen an amazing marriage? Yes. <laughs> you know, the one that you saw and said, wow, that is the kind of marriage that I want to have someday. And even, even for the guys, if you're, if you're not resonating, we'll go a little broader and say, have you ever seen any solid friendships that amazed you? I think they call it a bromance. <laughs> have you ever seen one of those, you, and you said, I really want that someday. What are some words that accurately describe that type of relationship? That marriage that you have in your mind. The perfect scenario. Patient. Selfless? Anything else? All right. Time. What about loving? It's all right. As they mentioned, patience, unselfishness, and would you say a good marriage necessitates faithfulness? Right? Have you ever seen a healthy marriage where the husband was unfaithful to the wife? If you have a good marriage, it is assumed that you are faithful to each other. Okay, so still thinking about this marriage, which came first with this relationship? Was it the loyalty that they had for one another, or was it the friendship? Did I just walk up to Duncan, and did he want to be my friend because, because of everything that I had ever done for him? Was it because of my faithfulness to him that he was my friend? Or was it because, or was he loyal to me because of our relationship? Okay, thank you, I'm sorry, that was really tough to grasp, but you, you did it. <laughs> It took relationship first. Anyone in business understands this, there must first be some sort of a relationship built before a company or business can expect that customer to faithfully return. They call it customer loyalty and relationship marketing. And I looked this up online, businessman Gregory Biotti, I don't know who he is, he said this in a tweet, he said, fact, relationship marketing is effective in stopping customers from dating around with the competition dating around with the competition, it took a relationship. He said that what prevents customers from going to the other competitors is a solid relationship first. So you might be thinking, what does business and marriage have to do with me? I'm quite a few years off from that. Good question, I'm glad you're paying attention. If you haven't listened up until this point, I would like everyone to listen now, not just the seniors. We are Academy graduates, friends and family, if we are truly God's bride, if we are truly God's friend, then what must be the case? We will be faithful. Faithfulness is a byproduct of any good relationship. Like Rachel said, it's not something you're going to have to worry about sitting in your dorm room next year. Vanessa and Taylor, also known as Vanaylor, <laughs> that's Miss Tara. Do either of you ever wake up in the morning and question whether or not you will be loyal to your friend that day? That's a pretty deep thought, I know. But faithfulness will come about as a result of true love and a true friendship with God. Whether or not you will be able to stay faithful is not something you have to worry about if Jesus is your friend. Let's look at a biblical example as I start to wrap up. In 1 Corinthians 10, 13, the Bible reads, No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. Wait, pause. In essence, Paul is saying, look at those who have failed before you. See the countless temptations succumbs to. See their lust of the flesh. Look at the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. See those who have gone from this place only to waste their lives away on drugs and alcohol. See your friends who have repaid the hard work of teachers and deans with just a wave as they walk out of the church. Such is common to man. But don't worry, I don't say these things to discourage you. Because the verse doesn't end there. It continues, but God is faithful. To my class, our promises are as ropes of sand. Yes, we have learned Bible truth, 
Yes, we have given our own Bible studies, but simply these things will not keep us this summer, next year, throughout our lives. It will not keep us faithful. But you can only stand as you hold his hand. You can only stand as you hold his hand. It's that friendship relationship that we were talking about. Those who are called faithful in the end are not those who have mastered their self-control, but those who have a friend named Jesus. You guys, we are given an impossible task. It is to stay faithful in an unfaithful world. But we serve a God who makes all things possible, and through Him, you can be found faithful, only because He is. Our story that began as, as any other high school story has an interesting ending, a glorious ending. I'm going to read an excerpt from a passage that we read during our senior camp in. And it comes from, and it brings us to the end of our story. And I would like the graduates to please close their eyes as I read this. We're jumping in at the middle, in the middle of a tour, a tour through the city of heaven. And it reads, after we beheld the glory of the temple, we went out. And Jesus left us and went to the city. Soon we heard his lovely voice again saying, come my people. You have come out of great tribulation and done my will. Suffered for me. Come into supper, for I will gird myself and serve you. We shouted, Alleluia, glory, and entered into the city, and I saw a table of pure silver. It was many miles in length, yet our eyes could extend over it, could not extend over it. I saw the fruit of the trees of life, the manna, almonds, figs, pomegranates, grapes, and many other kinds of fruit. I asked Jesus to let me eat of the fruit, but he said, not now. Those who eat of this fruit go back to land, to earth, no more. But in a little while, if faithful, you shall both eat of the fruit of the tree of life and drink of the water of the fountain. And he said, you must go back and tell, go back to earth again and relate to others what I have revealed to you. Then an angel bore him gently down, bore me gently down to this dark world. Sometimes I think I can stay here no longer. All things of earth look so dreary. I feel very lonely here, for I have seen a better land. But oh, that I had wings like a dove, then would I fly away and be at rest. You can open your eyes. Have you ever had such an amazing dream that when you woke up and realized it was all fake, you were almost depressed? But friends, this is reality. As I said before, these things are just as real as the chair you're sitting in. This is what home is like, really. Home with the Father. Home with your friend. And if faithful, we'll all be there. But remember that faithfulness is only a response to a solid relationship. So make God your best friend. Stay faithful to your Father, and you will receive the crown of life. of academic achievements of the senior class. Today I have a uh, stage with me, Chad Bernard, the principal of uh, Weimar Academy, Dr. Neil Medley, the president of Weimar Institute, and Dr. Alan Davis, vice president of academic affairs of Weimar Institute. And we're here to congratulate them. Before we do that, I'd like to invite Dr. Davis. Before we make this official this morning, I have a few things I would like to share. First of all, I'd like to welcome all the family and the friends and loved ones who have, some of you have made very long journeys to be here. And we know that this is a most important and solemn occasion. And I want to thank you personally for supporting these graduates. For the graduates, it's been an honor and a privilege and a blessing getting to know you this last year. You have made my first year here at Weimar Institute just 
fantastic. And, and I just can't put it in any other words. I've gotten to know all of you, some of you better than others, but it's just been a fabulous ride. And I'm very proud of each and every one of you. We at WeMar, as you know, are committed to the mission and a vision of healing a hurting world. And we look forward to the plans that the Lord has for these young people. Some of them have decided to go to places far off. Some not so far off, and then others have decided that they will cross the bridge over this short little valley over here and join us at the college to continue their education in the same ministry that Christ did in healing a hurting world so that we can finish this work and go home. The students here, especially those at the college, but even at the academy have heard me say this, that we are in business to go out of business. And so as we continue to move forward in this work here at Weimar Institute, I just want to thank all of you for supporting us. Those of you who are here, those of you who are joining us via internet, thank you. And for the students, I just want to charge you with the same blessing that Moses was given to the people as they went forward to do their work. And that is the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace forevermore. Now, it is my privilege to finish this work today. Are you ready? I'm going to invite all of you now to stand. <laughs> okay, now I want everybody to look at these young people and these shining faces, some of these faces with a little bit of disconcertion, like, I don't know what's next. And I want you to look at them for the last time as students and seniors of Weimar Academy. I, uh, before he says that important thing, I just have to recommend them to you. Otherwise, he can't do this. <laughs> so, um, Dr. No, it's my fault. Dr. Davis, I recommend to you the 2016 graduating class of Weimar Academy. Each of the graduates have met all the requirements of the diplomas for which they have applied for. <laughs> Deep breath, exhale. Now by the virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees as the Vice President of Academic Affairs at Weimar Institute and by virtue of Weimar Academy operating with the Education Code of the State of California and upon recommendation of the faculty and the staff, I confer on the candidates who have met all requirements of the diplomas for which they are recommended of Weimar Academy, class of 2016, you are now graduates. Meeting all the requirements for a Weimar Academy diploma, we recognize Rachel Marie Bautista Abello.
Chloe May Amundsen. Christine Bronco. Reagan Gail Dent. Christian Daniel Free.
Amy Camille Kruger. Christopher Laredo. Joanna Lee Rice.
Elise Leilani Salvador. Vinicius Souza Seidel. Cristobal Jose Villasante. <laughs> God is so good, isn't he? Amen. Let's praise him. Would you kneel with me? Dear Lord, we want to just thank you and praise you this morning. You have been faithful every step of the way. Lord, you've been faithful from that first day until today. Lord, and as these parents who used to hold these young people in their arms and rock them to sleep are now surrounding them as they're taking this next big step in their life, Lord, we, we want to just praise you and we want to ask for your blessing. Amen. Lord, as you've held their hand all of, these, all of this journey, Lord, we praise you for saying that you promised, you promised you'll never let go. Lord, hold on to their hands on throughout eternity. Lord, right now I just want to pause just for a moment to give these parents an opportunity to pray a blessing over their children as they go forward in you.
Lord, I thank you for what you have done in these families. Lord, they're a memorial to what you can do for your people. Lord, I pray that you would answer all of these prayers that were spoken here this morning by these parents. And Lord, when you come very soon, as a family, may they rise up to meet you. In Amen. This is our prayer, this is our desire. And we thank you. Bless the name of Jesus Christ. Let everyone sing. Ladies and gentlemen, we have one more order of business, and that is that I would like to now present to you the Weimar Academy Senior Class of 2017.